This is Daryl W. Perry, host of Free Talk Live. This November, I'll be running in the world's biggest and most popular marathon, the New York City Marathon. And I've accepted a spot on Team Innocence Project because I'm a passionate supporter of their work. Since 1989, 353 people in the United States have been exonerated by DNA testing, including 38 who pled guilty to crimes they did not commit, and 20 of whom served time on death row. The Innocence Project provided direct representation or critical assistance in 180 of these cases. With your help, The Innocence Project can help even more people who have been wrongly convicted. As part of Team Innocence Project, I am raising awareness about wrongful convictions and raising funds to help free the innocent. I've already paid the race registration fees. However, to secure my spot on Team Innocence Project in the New York City Marathon, I need to raise $3,500 by November 1st. You can support the Innocence Project and help me secure my race entry by going to run.freetalklive.com. I just, I really don't have as much time to spend on social media as I used to. That makes me sad. That makes me sad (laughs) to admit that. I don't like that. I don't like that fact. I mean, it's good. It's good I'm being busy, but I don't like the fact that I can't just hang around on social media all day like i used to yeah suck growing up adulting sucks man you know (laughs) it certainly does um we are just some modern day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery statism it's the seeds of liberty podcast with andre dave and jeremy hello everybody and welcome to the 147th episode of the seeds of liberty podcast as always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. All right, so we are back. This is Jeremy. Uh, I actually have some co-hosts this week. Last week, uh, for those of you listening, you heard, heard my discussion with Mance Raider, but the other guys weren't here. But Andre has returned this week, finally. Hey, Andre. Yeah. Hey, what's up, guys? After, after I went and covered for you before, the, you know, I did put a little intro to cover for you on the previous week's show, and then you went ahead and I, f- I found out afterwards you were just drunk with your girlfriend and totally forgot about us, you bastard. Oh, yeah, you know, my bad. It was spring break, <laughs> and, like, I never get to see her. My fucking bad. How dare you? How dare you? Bro, know, bros before hoes, man. I shouldn't have bros a before hoes. I, I should, you know what? I should just devote my life to spreading the gospel. Yes, you should. You should. Um, Dave is not with us this week, which, you know, actually is usually a good thing for me. Um, but in his place, <laughs> we have our friend Shane Buell back. Um, and actually, after the last time we had Shane uh, stop by, we uh, we talked to him after the fact and actually asked him to kind of become, well, the fourth SOLer, I guess, currently, um, because Dave is going to be missing more likely than not a uh, ha- handful of shows in the upcoming future with his farm, farm work and stuff. So Shane, man, thank you for uh, coming back and thanks for agreeing to uh, fill, 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 fill in for the beard while he's not around. Dave's not here, man. <laughs> but yeah, thanks. It's good to be here. <laughs> still, still one of my favorite episode titles ever. Dave's not here even when he is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so it's it's uh, good to be here with you guys. Uh, like I said, you know, last week was fun getting to talk to Mance, but uh, it's always good to have uh, some other people around to have a chat with. And we we were talking before the show. We didn't really have a direction necessarily, but I figured we could catch up with what's going. You know, since we haven't really talked to one another <laughs> outside of other other random conversations, figure out what's going on. What about you, Andre? What's been up with you since you've been you know out getting drunk and bailing on us and all these sorts of things? All right, so I had my spring break um, last week, and that was a lot of fun. It was nice to just have a break. Uh, And my girlfriend, uh, my girlfriend from Canada, Chelsea, came down and uh, stayed with me for the whole... Wait a minute, I didn't realize she's a Canucker. She is. We we like to make fun of Canada all the time. I did not know that. Wow, how did that escape me? (laughs) 
That's an excellent question because I do mention it uh, fairly regularly. So uh, that's all on you, bro. Yeah, of course. I'm I don't sure it is. Tell you. I I'm can't sure make any is. excuses. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she came down for the week and uh, we had a good time. We went down to uh, Florida. We drove, t- we drove like 10 hours down to Florida to Fort Lauderdale to hang out with a bunch of people that I know and that she knows from Steam It. Um, and then the next day drove 10 hours back because you know, didn't have any money to spend on like <laughs> an extended vacation stay down there wow and plus i had to get my daughter too so well yeah the priorities but, but that's a, that's but a mean, haul it was, man it was fun <laughs> yeah no it was it was a haul but it was good i haven't done a road trip in a while and uh, i really enjoyed that one she's she's great company on a road trip uh we stopped by this place in uh right outside orlando called uh super saiyan it's a faux place let me they, they have faux vietnamese soup right okay. um oh well, I don't know. Maybe some people don't know what faux is. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. No, I. I was caught off guard when you said that. I was thinking. I was thinking faux in terms of fake when you said that at first. And I'm oh, like, no, a no, faux no. place. Yeah, no, 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 no. Faux. P H O. P H O. P H O. Okay. Um. But yeah, they're uh. They they have like a couple of uh, uh Dragon Ball Z uh themed dishes. One of them is called the Kaoken Bowl, and the thing is fucking enormous. Like both me and her ate until we were like filled to the brim, and there was still half the bowl left. So. Nice. But it was awesome. It was it was a good trip. We had fun. Did you say that was Vietnamese food? I think. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm just asking. I don't, yeah, I'm pretty sure. It I, is. I, I, I'm trying to think. I, I don't think I've ever had. I mean, I, I've had you know a bunch of other of the uh, different types of Asian foods and stuff like that in all those places. But I've I don't think I've ever had Vietnamese. Um, I'm that was sure my it was first good, time though. having pho. That was actually my first time having pho, and it was good. It was good. It wasn't anything fancy. It was very simple, very straightforward. But it was good. It was it was delicious. Um, and then we came here, we hung out, um, drove around because she's going to be going to uh, Auburn University in Montgomery um, coming up in the fall for a graphic design degree. Uh, she wants to move down to the state, so she's going to get a graphic design degree, and that's going to be her pathway to to acquiring permanent residency, we hope. Uh, um, and so she's coming. she came down and we visited. Damn uh, immigrants uh, stealing our campus. gerbs. I know. Keep terrible. <laughs> but... Uh, um no we had a good time we had a good time and then uh this whole last week has been just balls to the wall because i'm like finishing up my uh my writing class my advanced legal writing class and uh i i know i've mentioned it a couple of times but uh uh, the project for this semester was to write an appellate brief and present an oral argument and appellate briefs are significantly more difficult than than uh, legal memorandums legal memorandums are like you know four or five maybe six pages long uh, appellate briefs are like on average about 30 pages long of which, you know, a solid 15 to 20 pages of that is legal argumentation with a lot of references and sites. So it's, it's pretty involved and it has been pretty involved and I've had to rewrite it like four or five times cause it's just, it never ends up coming out right. So yeah, good times. That, yeah. That does not good sound times. like fun. That's been, <laughs> that's been my life. And, and you know, it's not, uh, one of the things I, I absolutely do love about uh, um, the study of the law is it really boils down to making logically sound arguments. That's almost a hundred percent of what uh, of what legal argument is, or what practicing the law really is. Is you're just making legal arguments that support your position. Um, so, as somebody who who loves the uh, use and implementation of logic and logical rules, this has been absolutely fantastic. The only problem is when it comes down to it, you have to like go through and 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 cite to all these cases and make sure your citation is correct and all the rest of the formatting goes along with it and that they follow a very specific form. Because, of course, you're writing for this this for a professor as opposed to, you know, just for your own benefit. So just like every other kind of writing assignment, it's a little bit more of a hassle than it would be if I was just trying to make a point. Sure. Yes, I, I, I understand. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, I, I struggle enough with trying to, with I, as I've been trying to write write more and more these days. So I've been trying to write blog posts and stuff. And I, I struggle just with that. I can imagine if I was getting, if I, if I knew I was getting graded on, on top of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, no kidding. So, well, I'm, I'm glad at least you got to have some fun before you had to get back to all that. That sounds, uh, right. Like I said, uh, it sounded like quite a journey, but I, I'm actually a huge fan of those too. I don't know if I, I don't think, I don't think I'd do it these days with kids. Although, you know, when I went out to Michigan a couple of years ago by myself, well, just me and the dog, you know, that was a lot of fun. 
Although I shouldn't say that because I had I actually did have a lot of fun on a road trip with my kids last year, but totally different experience with somebody else <laughs> or by yourself. Uh, and I actually do like to, you know, I've talked about it before. I used to make the trips down to South Carolina on a monthly basis, you know, basically for half a weekend by the time I actually got down there and had to turn around and come back. And it, that's, you know, basically s- somewhere between the same thing, 10 and 13 hours each way. And uh, yeah, whatever. It's fun. Do it. Especially, uh, especially while you're young enough to, because the older you get, just becomes less. Lot less oh yeah, fun. <laughs> yeah. This was, uh, it was significantly harder than uh, I remember it being when I was in my like, you know, when I was twenty or twenty. Yeah, and you could 22. drive the whole, you could drive, you could drive the whole way, get there, be like, hey, I'm ready for the return trip right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seriously, like, you, you know, get me, you get me another Red Bull or a or jolt or something. You didn't have like, to like, you know, swap out all that much because you were totally fine driving twenty eight hours straight and just rocking and rolling. And, and no, nah, that shit ain't happening anymore. Oh, yeah, exactly. Makes me sad. <laughs> oh, yeah, getting old sucks. Well, like I said, at least you had fun, though. But how about you, Shane? What, what about you, Shane? What have you been up to since we last <laughs> chatted? Well, um, I actually love my new job. I know the last time we talked, I was unsure how it was going to turn out. Oh, you, you, but, it, was like uh, your fir- it wasn't like your first day the last time we had you on? <laughs> but yeah, it was like my first day, and it was at a different location. They've actually now sent me to the location that I was hoping on. And it's really nice. Um, you know, it's heated and they have all the equipment they need. Plus, um, I actually work with people I've known from before. So I'm working with old friends and I work four 10 hour days and I have three days off every week. So it's really nice. I'm loving the new schedule, love the new job. So I'm actually satisfied with the way things turned out. Well, that's good. Now, are those, I mean, I, again, I know it's only been a few weeks, but those four 10 hour days, are they actually staying to 10 hours or is it, is it, is it looking like they may start creeping up into crazy hours like your last job did that was supposed to be a set, set amount of hours and never well, was? No. Okay. So the site that we're working at, um, only has two 10 hour shifts with a two hour shutdown in between. And so when it's time to leave, it's time to leave. Everybody oh, okay. leaves and we don't cool. stick around. Yeah. Okay. So that's, so you don't, you don't, you don't even run the risk of that. That's, that's awesome, man. Cause I know mm-hmm. how, I know how much that yeah. was draining you the last, <laughs> with the last job where, where it was just like, I'm, I'm supposed to be doing this many things. I'm not even supposed to be here now. That type of thing, you know? Yeah. My last job was only supposed to be like five days a week and eight to 10 hours a day, but it turned into six, 12 hour days and it just got crazy. And uh, one of my old coworkers actually sent me a photo, a picture um, of something that happened this week where they had this big, it's a giant crate. It's like three tons and it's like 20 foot long Jeez. and they put them in. Yeah. And they put them, I don't know why they have to move these things so far across the warehouse. To me, it would make sense to put the largest things closest to the dock so you don't have to move them so much. But uh, so these things are huge and you have to raise them up over a lot of the other inventory merchandise to get them back to where they, you know, I guess, uh, store them. Well, uh, the thing was weighed so much and he was raised it up and he was trying to get it over these other things. And I guess the forklift tipped forward, but luckily the giant crate that he had on the forks didn't fall off because the stuff that it leaned against was bracing it. But he showed me a picture of uh, the forklift half tipped over foot to the fork, half tipped forward with this giant crate on the forks leaning against these other boxes. And that was all that was holding it. I was like, wow, you got lucky there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could have been quite a mess. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that things are going. Well. Hopefully that keeps up because uh, I know I, re- I remember when you started the last one and you, you were look you were so looking forward to it. And then as the time went on and you just got more and more dejected, it was, you know, I, I, was, I was I was bummed for you, man. So I hope this one works out a lot better. Well, I got a good here. I mean, I work hard, but it's, you know, mentally and emotionally very easy to deal with. I have a lot of old friends there to talk to. So, yeah, I really love it. Awesome. I got it good. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's see. As for me, oh, first, well, I was going to say as for me, but first, uh, something I realized uh, that actually I realized right after last week's show, uh, the, well, the the last show where we were all together, or not even, maybe it was the one with Dave. I don't remember. Maybe the one, last one we were all together. And then I realized it before I did the one with Mance, but then, of course, I never mentioned it because, well, I was just talking with him. But I realized that we never uh, discussed the fact that we have here at the Seeds of Liberty reached our three year anniversary. We have been doing this now for over three years because we started, I think, early or middle, somewhere around there, uh, somewhere between the 5th and the 12th, I remember, uh, of March. 
way back in 2015. So SOL is now three years old. So we're a little late, but I Woo-hoo. wanted to make sure that I finally mentioned that because uh, I remember Shane, Shane Radliff doing that on, the, on, on his show too, Liberty Under Attack. He's like, oh my God, I just realized I missed an anniversary because I'm so busy doing all these other things. It's like, you know what? Uh, for all the uh, ups and downs we've had over the years, that's still pretty. That's a pretty big accomplishment to actually have a podcast last this long. Because in this game, they, I mean, it is you. I, you hear this from everybody. Basically, most podcasts that get started pod fade before they hit number seven. Right. So usually, if you get past past your seventh podcast, you're in really good shape. And if you hit your tenth, you're like in a very small percent. You're in the very top percentile there. So the fact that we now, like you know, as I said at the beginning of this show, this is our 147th, and we, you know, we've missed a couple here and there, but we've basically been a weekly podcast for now over three years. I'm going to pat ourselves on the back, God damn it! I think we deserve it because we've continued to pump this content out. I mean, neither of you were here at the beginning, but that's okay. <laughs> Uh, this well, I was actually a listener at that time. Well, no, this is true. This is true. You were one. Of, you were one of our very first listeners because um, I remember I, I had just gotten to know who you were through because you knew Danilo first um, through the whole new gateway thing right before we started this project. And yeah, and um, yeah, like I said, uh, overall, the fact that we've been able to do this for three years, I think I think we deserve something for that because it doesn't it doesn't happen. You know. I'm sure plenty of people listen to podcasts. They're like, oh, these these guys have been going even longer. It's like, yeah, but look how many ones didn't make it that far. <laughs> hashtag this is very true. Made. Very true. So, yeah. So, hashtag us too. We made it. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I wanted to get that out of the way. Anyway, uh, let's see. As for me, uh, yeah, because I don't think I covered much of anything last week. Uh, I was trying to talk to Mance about what was going on with him and the whole meme world, but. Uh, yeah, I, I, I may have mentioned on my other show, I've the subtractions. I don't remember, but I did finally get, you know, somewhat good news, uh, in, res- in regards to me finally getting the fuck out of here. My court case, of course, is still not settled, although I haven't called my lawyer again yet to check in. I, I do need to do that before our next uh, court date, but I did finally receive word that the potential, uh, I really hope I get to drop the potential word soon. Uh, but the potential buyers for my house were finally given their mortgage commitment, you know, from the bank. So all I'm waiting on now is a closing date. And, you know, even though I don't really pray, praying that, you know, some major catastrophe doesn't all of a sudden pop up that manages to blow this deal up at the last minute, which is something I've been deathly afraid of this entire time. But I'm almost at that point where at least the house situation is finally almost taken care of because like I said, they got their commitment. So all they really need to do is give me a date. And apparently there was some confusion because when I asked my agent about it, she's like, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll get a date soon, but they know you want to, you're looking for like a May date. And I'm like, no, no, no. I wanted to be out before May because I'm running out of money. You need to tell them to speed this yeah. thing up. Like I'm ready to close. Let's do this. Let's, you know, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, but that was good. So, you know, like I said, even though everything's not, I'm still not all sorted out. At least that's one huge hurdle that I'm almost over. And, uh, even though that means murder dog and I will be living out of the car for a little while, at least I won't have to worry about all the extra bills that I have to pay (laughs) for having this house that I can't really afford at the moment. Sounds like you're ready for an epic road trip. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were, we were talking about that before the show. The uh, my my plan is that I'm gonna head out for a road trip after. Uh, probably gonna be a little bit longer than yours, Andre. But I'm gonna head out to Indiana because, as I've mentioned before, that is where we were, where we plan on going. But I've only ever driven through the very northeast corner twice. Uh, on my way, on my way to Michigan for the past two years, so I've driven back and you know through through the northeast corner and then back through the, the in the other direction on two separate occasions, and uh, that's that's basically my not working knowledge of the state of Indiana, uh, other than the friends that I have there or friends like Shane who used to live there. <laughs> so yeah, I'm originally from the northeast corner. Yeah. So um, my plan is as soon as my next court date, which is coming up. Uh, soon <laughs> but once that's over i'm going to 
uh, really quickly, uh, really quickly sketch out a, a trip where I can hit a bunch of different towns where there's a bunch of different houses for rent that I've already s- at least seen online. And I'm going to try to line them all up where I can kind of go see all of them uh, one after another, hopefully within a couple of days span. And, you know, if I manage to have enough time, I, I'm going to try to stop by and see Shane. And uh, I have a couple other friends, uh, actually uh, fr- friends of uh, friend, friends of the show. They're actually uh, listeners of the show, Tammy and Thomas Huff. They uh, are going to uh, hopefully put me up for a little while while I head out there and I'm going to scout out the area around where they live. And uh, another friend of the show who's who's been on actually I think we had her on twice and I was talking about getting her on it again recently and she actually presented the idea and then never answered me when I said hey we have an opening this week you want to come on never heard back from her but uh, Mandy Silver who we've had on a couple of times she uh, what call it uh, she's out that way too so I'm gonna try to see her and then figure out where the best location is for me to rent a place for the time being and then. Uh, at least, again, have one more step taken care of and then trudge my way back and hopefully figure out the end of my court case uh, or at least see the end of my court case happening relatively soon after that so I can finish packing up because that's going to be the one real pain in the ass is I'm most likely going to rent a pod because it seems like the easiest thing to do, you know, rent, you know, pack it all up and have it shipped across over to Indiana so I don't have to deal with that stuff. But I have to have it come here to my house filled up with whatever we're taking here. Although, I mean, there's a decent amount that's either getting tossed or donated or we're trying to sell, but the things that are, that are being taken out of this house, we have to pack in there and then have it stored for a little while until we're actually ready to go. And then we have to have it brought back out and brought over to where Jen and the kids are going to be staying and pack up all that stuff (laughs) because they have furniture over there that's coming with us. And then all the girls stuff and all Jen stuff. And uh, so that's going to be extra money, which I'm not looking forward to. But uh, and then finally have it shipped out to wherever we finally decide to go. So, yeah, uh, I do plan on doing a little road trip and, uh, you know, it's not going to be completely a pleasure one, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to do some work and I have to plan well because I can't waste a lot of time. I don't have a lot of money and it's really not fair to leave the Jen Jen with the kids for like a week and be like, all right, see you later. I'm going to go check the place out. (laughs) Meanwhile, you know, pretty much every night I'm hanging out with a different set of friends <laughs> partying or something. <laughs> yeah, that just won't do. Um, but yeah, so that, that's the plan. And uh, I think we might have mentioned this at one point, but because of that, uh, there is a good chance that there might be some interruptions in the show in the near future in the next couple of months. Hopefully not, because I, I have said that I'm going to try my best to if I'm st- if I'm stuck here with like without my house and I'm you know Cameron and I are living out of the car, then I'm going to do my best to to do do some guerrilla style uh, podcasting where I'll just borrow some Wi-Fi from the local library and uh, try re- you know I'm going to try to br- uh, broad uh, what call it record from my car. Uh, and see if we could pull that off. I mean, I know James Babb used to be able to do it, and he was able to do it on live radio and sound great. He made he like made himself a little mobile studio in his car, and was if you know if he was able to pull it off on live radio and not really get dropped out that often, I think I should be able to do record and you know have a good enough connection to. Uh, still be the server to hook up with you guys, or at least have somebody else run the server and still be able to record and get everything done. But if that doesn't happen, then we may miss a show here or there. So we are actually scrambling right now to try to record some extra shows just in case. Um, But if for some reason the seeds doesn't come out uh, in in any particular week coming up, uh, I will do my best to try to at least have a little filler episode like I did the last time, you know, at least explaining that we're gone, number one. And number two, ever, you know, for all of our listeners, you can also, of course, catch uh, my other show, Abolitionist Abstractions, which will most likely continue to come out uh, almost uh, regardless of what happens because I do already have a backlog of, of those episodes coming out. Uh, I just actually put the one out with Danilo. Uh, our, our friend Danilo, uh, former co-host that uh, just just came out today, and I still have a couple others backed up, and I hopefully have a couple a number of people I'm going to talk to next week, so I'll have a huge backlog. So you can always catch that show during the week if there isn't a seed show because it's still on the same uh, RSS feed. So you'll still get at least one show a week from us until uh, we sort all this out. Yeah. Anyway, Danilo happens to have been my first anarchist friend. As a matter of fact, 
Yeah, that's, really. Yeah, that's right. I think you, yeah. you talked about that. I think the first, the very first time we had you on, Danilo was still here, and I think you uh, talked about that then. But Andre, yeah, you weren't aware of that. Yeah, Danilo was. No, I I had no idea. But that's cool. That's awesome. I love how yeah. I love how this community it really is just you you run into people that you know, or you find people that know other people that you know as well, and just it all builds on itself. Yeah. Yeah, I was aware of Jeremy through a, an old um, group on Facebook called New Gateway, but um, I was still kind of a minarchist at the time. And uh, Danilo uh, had friended me right around the time I started looking into anarcho-capitalist type stuff. And he was actually my first anarchist friend. But then uh, I also became friends with Jeremy and, and all them around that time as well. And you know what else happened uh, three years ago? As uh, we joined, uh, well, at least I know I joined, I think you did too, the alternative social media platform known as MeWe. Yes, I signed up for an account at some point and I really haven't been back, but uh, I've noticed that a lot of people are flocking towards it now uh, as an alternative yeah. to uh, just get engaging regularly on Facebook. So um, you obviously have more experience with it than I do at this point. Well, not exactly. I mean, I did sign up three years ago and I made like a couple of posts and then it was so dead that I didn't really use it much because nobody else was using it. And then I checked in about a year later and there was a handful of people on there and I may have posted something else. But then um, I seen everyone talking about it again recently and I was like, oh, hey, I have an account over there. So I went and checked it out. And when I logged in for the first time after two years, I had over 740 notifications waiting for me on me. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, it it it's funny. Uh, I, I I too signed up way back then, and I had I largely forgot about it. But I would still every couple of months I would check in. But it was really funny this time around when a whole bunch of people who obviously didn't know that it existed all of a sudden were saying that they were jumping ship from Facebook, you know, because this has been building for a while. We've talked about this in a couple of past episodes where the just the whole Facebook scene is obviously extremely biased and they're you know they're they're restricting content i mean it's happening in a lot of other platforms too but facebook was extremely blatant about a lot of the stuff that they've been censoring or, or you know I, and I, mean, I don't even want to get into the discussion of yeah they're a private company yada yada, yada whatever it just it, it's been known and we've talked about it and we've all discussed the fact that a lot of us have pulled away from it largely or at least aren't using it as much but this latest one after i think it started a couple of months ago and now the the latest revelations were well allegedly what was it the cambria uh, uh, was it the Cam Cam cambria analytics or whatever it was the company um that supposedly had all this data from facebook but i just read something today that actually said pretty much everybody has the story wrong. Um, but either way, it was something that's part of the terms of service that everybody agreed to because nobody reads the terms of service. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's basically something that people shouldn't be mad about because they agreed to it. But with this latest stuff, there's just been this huge, you know, seeming exodus from Facebook, or at least people claiming they're leaving Facebook. And a bunch of people found MeWe and everybody's going, oh, MeWe, we're all going over there. And it's like, all right, I'll go over there and see what's going on. And the same thing with you, Shane. I, I had a bunch of notifications piled up. The only reason I didn't have more is because I had checked in more recently than two years ago. Uh, but it was just funny to see all these people acting like this was a new thing that came out. And a couple of people, including uh, Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends, didn't believe right. when he went to my, like he went to my wall and saw there was a, po he's like, why does this say it was three, you was posted three years ago. This <laughs> they, they didn't even exist three years ago. I'm like, yeah, it did, man. I'm like, I've been, yeah. I'm like, where's everybody else been? I, we had these accounts just, you know, it was, it was during the whole, the last time everybody was up in arms about Facebook and swearing they were leaving. And there was first, there was Sue TSU that's tried to get up and running and that really never went anywhere and then i think me we came shortly after that or they were at least they, they were definitely running at the same like they were definitely trying to get popular at the same time because i remember having both of them open uh, uh, both of them open at my on my browser uh way back when uh at, you know at the same time so uh but yeah apparently a lot of people have been excited about going over there because the, the big draw about me we is it doesn't have ads like facebook does but the way they get around that is they only give you eight gigabytes worth of storage space for basically your what you post, and then after that, that you there's a pay uh, pay scale. I don't. I, I've never even looked further for far enough into it to know how much it is, 
but you have to pay for an extra eight gigabytes for every extra eight gigabytes you want to pay beyond that. But, you know, like I said, I, I had the account back then. I probably put like, you know, 20 to 30 posts back then when we first, when we first tried it out three years ago. Yeah. And over time I've randomly, anytime I've checked back in, I've usually just posted like the latest show because we have a Seeds of Liberty group over there. And Danilo had actually started another group that he made me in an admit of, and he never came back to it. So even though he's listed as the owner, I've been running it for the past couple of months that people have been going uh, back there all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, you know, and I had originally, Go ahead. I originally only made a few posts and posted a couple of photos and Michael Dean, he came on my wall and he saw one of those photos said three years ago and he thought it had pulled that from the metadata of the photo itself. And I was like, no, I actually posted that three years ago. Yeah. Um, but I, well, that's, that's what I was trying to get to. I, I posted, I've posted a bunch of stuff and since I've been back on it for the past, I don't know, month or so, since a whole bunch of other people have seemingly been headed that way, I figured why not? It's a good place to post content. Uh, I've been sharing a lot of my content there and, you know, I've posted a decent amount of stuff and I've still only used 0.1 gigabyte of data. So I don't think there's a, I don't, I, I, I saw a lot of people uh, freaked out when they read that. It's like, oh my God, I have to pay. It's like, do, do you realize how long it's going to take <laughs> you to get eight gigabytes worth of data on their cloud server? Right. You know, <laughs> like, I think you got some time, man. Chill out. <laughs> uh, but that seems to be the biggest draw, I think, is the, is the, is the lack of ads. Plus, Every, I mean, it, it's built kind of, it looks kind of like Facebook ishy, you know, the, the UI. Uh, but the other feature that a lot of people I think seem to be enjoying, at least what I can tell that the different groups that I'm in is that each group comes standard with a chat that's attached to it that all group members can automatically enter into, or, you know, you can mute it if you want to, if you don't want to be bothered by it, but instead of just interacting on different, uh, whatchamacallit, different posts and having to create your own group chats, it automatically creates it for the group, which is kind of cool because I've seen some pretty interesting conversations and people kind of quickly getting to know each other through that through that, rather than taking time to like, you know, maybe uh, friending them and then checking out their posts for a little while before you actually have any interaction with the people like talking right, right away. And it's, it seems to have been building, you know, coalitions and stuff rather quickly and other groups were being shared quickly like that. So I don't know. I think that seems like a good thing to me. I don't know what you guys think about that. Oh, I definitely think so. Um, yeah. I'm actually a member of a lot of groups on there. Some of them from way back and there's all these different chats going on and it's kind of hard to keep up with, but uh, you do get to know a lot of people before actually friending them in a lot of those cases. So it's like, uh, well, I can interact with this person before I actually decide whether I want to friend them or not. And also the people that are, you're not friends with, I think all that stuff is pretty much private. So you can't really see, you know, there, I don't think it's, I don't think there's a way to set it to post publicly, but uh, yeah, anyone you're not friends with uh, all their stuff is pretty much private. Yeah. You, you can't see each other's stuff unless you, unless you accept a friend, a uh, friend request from them. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that is how that works. Which again, so it's designed to be a little more private. I mean, it's still, I know a lot of people have said, oh, it's still centralized. It's like, well, yeah, but it's still a better alternative to, right. to Facebook. And unfortunately, you know, while I'm a huge, as we've talked on plenty of episodes in the, in the recent past, uh, how I've become a fan of Steemit, and obviously we know Andre is too, and you know, I, 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 I'm a huge fan of that platform. I was having a conversation with a, a mutual friend of, of Shane of mine's, our friend Ty the other day. And cause he's big on the, you know, you know, steam it so much better cause it's decentralized. I'm like, yes, I, I get that. However, where are most people cl currently? Most people, if they're anywhere, are on Facebook. You know, that's the one account most people seem to have because despite the, the numbers falling, there's still a hu huge amount of people who have Facebook accounts all around the world, more than any other social media site. So people are looking for that particular experience. And while busy.org, the site that works alongside Steemit through the Steam Connect platform, right? Steam Connect, that's how it works through it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, while that does give you somewhat more of the Facebook type social media experience, it's still not the same. 
So people are still looking for that. And right now, MeWe is probably, I mean, I've, I've heard about Mines and a couple of other things, but I haven't actually gone and checked any of those out. But MeWe definitely seems to have more of the features that people seem to be you know, wanting in, an, in a replacement. So while I'm all for decentralization, <laughs> You know, kind of like doing certain things because you have to deal with the fact that the state is actually here right now. And as much as you'd like it not to be, you do have to work around the fact that it is. Well, in this situation, okay, well, this is the reality you have to deal with. So let's work around it. You know, (laughs) would it be great to have something almost exactly like Facebook that was completely decentralized so we could get the best of both worlds? Yes. We're not there yet. (laughs) No, Jeremy, everything has to happen all at once or not at all. <laughs> it's yeah. all at once or not at all. Well, that does seem to be some people's thinking. I don't know. <laughs> right. But yeah, so like I said, that's for for me, that's that those would those would seem to be the, the couple of upsides so far for that particular platform. And I, you know, I'm more than willing to try because just like I was originally when I finally did, said, okay, I was wrong and I'll go try Steam it out for a while. You know, it's content I was putting out anyway. And for the most part, most of what I've been sharing over there recently has just been my links to Steam, Steam it anyway, because that's still where I put like, that's where our show now gets put first. Uh, that's where my show gets put first. That's where my, that's where the seeds liberty memes now go first. Uh, everything goes through steam at first. So, you know, I'm just, sh- I'm just sharing stuff from there. And if I actually create anything, I would, you know, I probably would have put it on Facebook anyway. And well, you know, if I can get away from Facebook, great. So uh, why, why not just put it somewhere else where I'm just copying and pasting, you know, it onto yeah. Facebook later or vice versa. You know, it's not a big deal. And, the, the only problem I the, actually the, and the only downside I, I should say that I, I currently have with it and it, maybe I'm just missing something, but it doesn't appear that you can use the mobile site to access your profile and get to me because whenever I try to go to the mobile site, it tells me it takes me to a to a landing page that encourages me to the go to the Google Play Store and get the app. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I mean, well, not that I just get the app then. Well, I don't like, I've never liked any of the social media apps and it wasn't like, you know, even with Facebook and the privacy issues and all stuff, it wasn't even that. I mean, yeah, I had issues with that too, but the, the biggest thing for me with any of the social media apps was always the fact that it, there, there's such a drain on your fucking battery. And they be, really are. That is an excellent point because they will eat the shit out of your battery. Yeah. And especially because I use a podcatcher most of the day while I'm out. I mean, it's not as much as I used to anymore because I'm not working as much. But, you know, over the course of the past five years or so, I listen to a ton of of podcasts every, you know, every day. So my podcatcher, you know, that uses, that uses a decent amount of battery as it is, but I'm getting a lot of hours of, of content, you know, a lot of hours of joy and, uh, in education and inform, uh, entertainment out of that. But the app just being there <laughs> just drains it and drains it and drains it. So between using my podcatcher and if I, you know, use Waze during the day or cell 411 or any of the other ones I want to use, it's like I need to have every other bit of extra battery I can, con- you know, as as it is. So I don't need an extra drain. So I've never wanted to. And I think I actually tried the MeWe app back when it first, because I think they came out with it relatively quickly after they came out with the... Um, Maybe I'm wrong, but I could have swore they had an app back then three years ago. I believe they did, yeah. Yeah. And it was the same thing. Like it was it was it was relatively sleek, you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't too cumbersome. Uh so it was pretty easy to use and stuff like that. But the battery drain, I was just like, fuck, man. <laughs> I just I, I end up just getting rid of those things because it's just so not worth it for me. Um mm. so c- currently I can only use MeWe while I'm at, at my house. Um so I can't completely transition, which is unfortunate. But yeah, I'm making yeah. use of it. Yeah, I'm spending more time on MeWe and a little bit less time on Facebook. But unlike a lot of other people, I'm not quitting Facebook anytime soon because there's a lot of people that I've networked with that I only have as contacts on Facebook. So I would probably lose a lot of them if I were to move over to MeWe completely at this point. Yeah, me too. 
I have, uh, yeah, there's, I mean, I, I, I'm on, you know, a bunch of different platforms, but yeah, the bulk of the people I connect with are through there. So, uh, I've said, that yeah, I'll, that's, that's my big thing. That's why I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to try and see if I can use both of them, I guess. I don't know. It's hard enough for me to just even keep up with, uh, Facebook and steam it, to be honest with it. It's hard enough just to keep up with steam it at this point. Maybe like once I, you know, get into second year where it's not quite as horrendous as far as being on my time, but I just, I really don't have as much time to spend on social media as I used to. That makes me sad. That makes me sad <laughs> to admit that. I don't like that. I don't like that fact. I mean, it's good. It's good I'm being busy, but I don't like the fact that I can't just hang around on social media all day like I used to. Yeah. Suck. Growing up, adulting sucks, man. You know, <laughs> it certainly does. Um, yeah, like, well, I, I, I'm, I'm not leaving Facebook either. I, I'll, I'll stay. I mean, because it, it does seem, every, you know, all the privacy issues that people are freaking out about. Most of it does seem to be attached to the app, and I haven't had that for years, so I'm not really too worried about that. And whatever else I know I signed up for. And most of them, I mean, I was docked, so most of my information is out there anyway. So I really don't care anymore about when it comes to most stuff like that. And when it comes to certain things that I wouldn't rather other other people know, I already have different avenues that I use for that anyway, so I'm not too worried. Um, I just figure I'll stay till on Facebook until I eventually get kicked off because, you know, I used to think Dave was being a little paranoid with his, you know, th thinking that we were always, you know, we, you know, him, us, all of us, the, you know, all of our pages and stuff had been like shadow banned on all these platforms. And now I'm finally starting to realize that I think he was right, at least at least on Twitter. And it may actually be on it may it may it may be on Facebook at this point too. I don't know because I realized like nobody's seeing my even though I had at one point almost three thousand followers on Twitter. They've, they've like nobody seems to see any of my stuff anymore, and my numbers followers have just started dropping off. And I don't know like I haven't posted anything controversial or anything that would like cause people to freak out. Right. So I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Dave was fine. That was right. We actually have been, and uh, it, it may be the case. But until they finally ban me, I mean, I tried to push the limits the other day, which I normally don't do anymore. But there, there was one meme that I had made a couple of years ago, which was the first meme I actually ever had pulled down from Facebook. I didn't get a. I never got a. I never got thrown a Facebook jail or anything. Even not even for for 24 hours, because I think it was actually my first offense in that regard. But they just pulled my, there was a taxation is th theft meme that I made where I found this picture of this baby looking like, a, I mean, it was definitely, it, it was definitely Photoshop because it was this baby, it was this baby coming out of the womb basically um, in a hospital, but with this really pissed off look on its face as it was like staring up at where the doc, like you see the doctor's arms where the doctor is. Um, and it was basically like, you know, what, what, it, what does it say? Oh, the baby's like, what the fuck do you mean? I'm already in debt. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. because of the, because there's blood all over the place and stuff, they pulled it down, but they pulled it off the seeds page. Oh, that's what it was. They, they shut, they locked the seeds of Liberty page down for 12 hours after that. Um, and then they, and then they gave, they gave us access again, but they took that down. But then I put it up on my personal, on my wall and no, I guess nobody ever reported it because it never came down and the memory of it came up <laughs> a couple of days ago. And, you know, in the past, I would have just forgot. I would just would have ignored it. But I'm like, ah, fuck it. Let's see what happens. So Wait I shared it again. <laughs> Wait a minute. So, but then again, they didn't, you know, they didn't take it down or anything. But I'm like, screw it. I'll just, I'll just use Facebook for now for continuing to post my content, even though they try to kill the Steam at links. I mean, you could tell they definitely yeah. do that. So I've had to resort to that thing oh, that, yeah. I, that I thought people were being obnoxious for, for, for so long with the, like, with where they would write things like link in the comments. And I'm like, well, that's annoying. Why are they doing that? Now I realize why people do that. So I've had to take in and do that. And I've, I've seen like, you could definitely tell, um, there's a significant difference in the amount of in the amount of likes that you get on these things. Oh, if, absolutely. If you share directly from steam it versus sharing, uh, like writing something out and me, like I've actually, even, I get even more if I write out, uh, or if like I put the show notes or something in there and write something like, Oh, this is the, this, I wrote this, or this is this show, um, link in comments. And especially if I add the show pick <laughs> as a meme, <laughs> 
<laughs> and then put the link in the comments. That seems to get the most attention because that seems to bypass everything because they still like memes seem to get be seen more than yeah. anything else. We, we probably still have the most reach on the Facebook platform, but I also I help admin for a bunch of pages that are seeing a very large drop in their reach. And I think they could be like Dave was saying, you know, either shadow banning or they change the algorithms so that we just don't have the kind of reach that we used to. Yeah, that happens too. I mean, they, they definitely have. I mean, we've had I, way back when we had Johnny Liberty on the show. I don't remember if he talked about it then, but he's talked about it. I've talked about it with him since. And he's actually somebody who I know studies these things and is constantly trying to fa find ways to beat them because he's run, you know, a bunch of pages that had like 50,000, 100,000 plus likes on it and stuff and followers. And, you know, not, a number of them have been shut down. <laughs> some permanently, some were eventually been able to be brought back. But, you know, he was constantly trying to find on ways because they do. They change the algorithms every couple of months. And then you have to scramble to try to figure out how to beat them all over again. And, you know, most of the time it does end up involved, especially if you're, you know, if you're running a page, it usually ends up involving you have to post something like usually every at least every two hours, I think is like the minimum. And then, you know, and, and a lot of times, it, you know, at least once an hour and then you have to find way and then you have to figure out the timing of it, too. And the certain words you can't use and the certain structure you have to you have to avoid because the algorithms just pick up like these block things like just certain words. They're just like, oh, no, nope, we're not going <laughs> to, you know, that's that's going to get filtered down to the bottom. Nobody will see that. Uh which is just, I mean, like I said, I, I know, I've known we've been up against this for a while, but it's just, it, it is frustrating when all you, all you really want to do is just try to get your content out there. And, you know, yes, uh, of course, you're able to use these platform, platforms like that for free, but they're getting so much off of you. You think, you know, you think it'd be all right if they, uh, you know, loosen the reins a little bit. <laughs> You know, no, he, hell no, absolutely not. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, that's where uh, that's where I'm at on the whole social media thing. Like I said, I'm just going to keep using it until uh, until they finally ban me. Maybe I'll start pushing the envelope again. Maybe not. Uh, you know, for, first and foremost, my, my focus uh, is, is usually on Steam at first. Like I said, you know, all, I put all the shows and stuff out there and any of the writing I've been doing has been going there first anyway. So I don't really have time for Facebook. You know, I still like I have that almost compulsion where I have to look at it during the day on my phone. Uh, at, but I like at best, I'll go to my time, you know, I'll go to my timeline and I'll scroll. I don't know. To where it has to read, where it has to uh, further load the page, like maybe two, like at most three times. So like I see like maybe twenty to thirty post tops, and then I'm like, all right, and then I put it down. So, and like you know, maybe I'll like a couple here and there. I almost rarely comment on stuff, and even though it's on most of the time, like I usually have a, a I usually have a, a a tab on my browser with it open here at the house when I'm here. You know, I'll check on it, and if somebody comments to me and I have to respond to them, I'll try to find time to do that. But I don't go out of my way to have conversations there anymore for the most part. And it's really just yeah. a dumping ground for me. So whatever. <laughs> yeah, I hardly ever really scroll through the news feed that much anymore. I just check my notifications and see if anybody's replied to comments or posts or anything like that. Uh, it's usually what I do on my break at work. And I can usually get that taken care of in 15 minutes or so and then go back to work. But uh, yeah, I don't really scroll through the whole news feed anymore. Yeah, it's been so depressing lately anyway, because, you know, between the the uh, the the gun, the guns, the, 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 of course, the, the ridiculous so-called gun debate that is going on again because of the, the Parkland shooting and uh, whatever other things going on that just it constantly, 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 it's all people talk about. And I, I just I don't need to see it. <laughs> Like I heard it the first time. All right, I'm good. Thanks. I don't need to, you know, especially when uh, people figure out, people catch on a little late, and then uh, then you got to hear it all over again. It's like, man, <laughs> what the hell's well, wrong with was, you? Where where have you been for the? Have you been living time. under a rock for the past month or so? 
Well, I have actually kind of been living under a rock, and I knew the, about the parkland thing, but only lo- started looking into it recently. So now I'm kind of going down that rabbit hole that everyone else has been down. And uh, I've got my tinfoil hat about halfway on at this point, but I'm trying to remain um, objective. <laughs> uh, I'm actually very glad Dave is not here right now. <laughs> because this could, <laughs> we, this could take a very wicked turn that I don't know if I want if I don't want to be around for. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of tinfoil, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I said that to you earlier. I, I, I haven't looked into it enough, and you know, with the whole after 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 dealing with after dealing with that whole thing with the Safe Act and having to live through all that and just the whole that whole thing with uh, Sandy Hook, I'm like, yeah, not worth it for me. No gun debates, no conspiracy theories around schools. When the word, when like anytime anything happens and the term false flag gets thrown up immediately uh, by certain circles, I almost immediately tune out and don't want to know what actually happened. <laughs> and I think it's just, it's, it's, I don't know, for me, it's kind of like a war weariness thing, I think. Because again, like yeah. after going through the 9-11 stuff, because that was the one that hit, hit me hard because it hit me personally because my cousin died there, you know? So like after I was mad and wanted to turn everything, the Middle East to glass. And then when I realized that I, that the government was up to a lot more crap than I, than I had originally uh, had any uh, knowledge of, uh, then, uh, then when I started to turn, I started to look all these things and I had my Alex Jones, Glenn Beck phase. And I looked into all this <laughs> stuff. Uh, you know, I went down so many rabbit holes with that and spent so much time with that, that I just, I burnt out me, maybe not permanently, but it's almost like, the first time I got drunk and when it was on vodka and I of course got sick cause I was 14 and trying to impress an older girl and got myself retarded on the vodka. Uh, I'm sorry if I triggered anybody with that word, but the, uh, the, uh, and then I couldn't even go near it. Like the smell of it made me nauseous for the next 15 years. Probably it might've been maybe Building even seven. longer before I could go anywhere near vodka. So maybe it's that, maybe, maybe it's that type of thing. It might not be permanent because I could probably have building some vodka. seven. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, what about fucking building that. seven? That's probably the same reason that after this whole parkland thing, I just kind of ignored it for a month. Cause I really didn't want to have to like research another, you know, shooting and go down another rabbit hole. And I had seen people talk about it and I was kind of burnt out on it for a while. So, and it's the same thing, like you were saying with the alcohol. I too have that same problem with vodka and now rum. I think tequila is about the only thing I can drink on a regular basis anymore. That's terrible. Tequila is the only thing anybody should drink on a regular basis. Sorry to hear that. As far as I'm concerned, (laughs) the tequila thing. I I, actually like tequila. I love my tequila. Well, I mean, when you can't drink anything else, I'm sure you absolutely adore the thing that you can drink. But uh, what's your uh, favorite spirit of choice? Whiskey. Uh, see, I'm just whiskey, of course, absolutely. See, I got sick of whiskey because I drank. I well, I drank Jack for for years, and then I just got That's sick. Your problem. I got sick. Yeah, I'm sure. I got sick of it, and then it it wasn't to the level of vodka because, like I said, these days now I I I can drink. I found different types of vodka, and I realized later on that I could actually drink it again if I wanted to. But I still prefer tequila. But yeah, whiskey. I mean, I keep a bottle of. I've been lucky enough to have a bottle of uh, Johnny Walker Blue in my house uh, continuously for years. <laughs> Every time I finally finish one, it somehow gets replaced. Um, the past couple of times, they've been gifts. It's been wonderful because uh, those things aren't cheap around here. Um, you know, and like that type of stuff I like, but not a lot of. Jen likes that. Jen's a whiskey girl. Me, uh, I don't know, man. I just like, I like, you know, I'm, I'm not talking like Cuervo or any of that piss water shit. No. You know, no, like top shelf like tequila and not even like, I, I don't know. I don't know about you, Shane. I, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of Patron. I know a lot of people like that. Well, I did like Patron, uh, but there is another brand I've been uh, drinking on and off lately. I think it's called Souza or D'Souza. It comes in a silver bottle with a rooster on it. It's very smooth and I don't drink it straight. I just make margaritas out of it. Oh, well, see, if I'm making margaritas, I can have, I, I'll take Cuervo or pretty much whatever. I don't care. I drink it. I either drink, do shots um, or uh, drink it with a, a not, not straight. I do like a little lime juice in it. Um, oh, yeah, that's good. 
but uh but yeah man i i don't know i uh a couple of my friends knew i liked tequila years ago and would buy me different w- bottles for my birthday every year so i got to try all these different ones and over time i found uh i'm a huge fan of uh the Herradura's. i like i like their stuff a lot um but probably if if I, like i had to choose at a pinch it would either be uh don julio uh or 1800 both mm. sil- both <laughs> both silver i'll drink the yeah. what is it? the anejo is the other one right i'll drink the anejo every once in a while but i much prefer the silver ones the blancos 1800 yeah. 1800 blanco or don julio blanco oh man i could drink that shit all fucking day long <laughs> I will say this: I have I have had eighteen hundred silver, and it's pretty good. I mean, I'm I'm not knocking tequila just in general, but I've had I've tried a variety of tequilas, and the vast majority of them are awful, or at least to my taste. Anyway, this is true. same thing with same thing with vodka. I've tried a, a fair amount, fair number of different brands of vodka, and most of them are terrible. Well, the only one that I can vodka. actually stand to drink is uh, Stolichnaya. This is the only one that's smooth enough to where I can't where i don't feel like i want to just punch myself in the in the throat yeah. well if your vodka comes in a plastic bottle that's your first clue yeah that's but, it. Uh, oh man aristocrat vodka is the best bro <laughs> it's the best have you had gray goose i haven't i don't like it at all i think it, oh. i think it the taste is actually off-putting yeah that's- it's it's smooth it's smooth enough to where the bur- the like the the that nice burning sensation you get at the back of the throat when you drink whiskey when you drink uh hard liquor is is smooth enough to where it's not unpleasant, but uh, just the, something about the way it tastes. I don't, I don't know. There's an aftertaste, if I remember, because that was the one I actually started drinking when I was able to drink vodka again. Because my dad drank it, so it was around. If I was, if I saw him, and I was like, oh, all right, and I, I, and I was like, at first, I was like, oh, it is smooth. I like it, but for, I remember there being some. It was, it wasn't exactly an aftertaste, but it was something along those lines that was kind of the same. Yeah, thing I don't really me. know how to classify it. Just it's something. Yeah. I, I don't know. The taste just. I don't, uh, I don't yeah. know. Well, Stolak Nye is not bad for a vodka. <laughs> well, you know, it's, yeah, I it's all relative, man. <laughs> it's all subjective. Preference is subjective, indeed. Yeah. I mean, I don't even dr- I don't even drink that. I barely drink at all anymore. I mean, I don't even. Th- I actually don't. For the first time in a long time, I don't think I actually even have any vodka in the house. Not even in the bar out in the garage. I don't think there's any, not vodka tequila rather. Uh, I don't think I have anything. I I think the only thing that might be in my freezer is a bottle of uh, Jägermeister <laughs> that's been there forever because uh, I just don't like. Actually, yeah, a couple of months ago we bought a twelve pack of, of beer of Yingling, which I actually like. That was one of my favorite it's not beers. Bad. When uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's probably my one of my favorite or at least you know bigger name domestic beers. And I, uh, I think we drank like one or two of them, and the rest of them have just sat in the fridge for like months now because <laughs> I just don't drink anymore. I, uh, I don't know. But Jaeger? Oh man, I can't drink that. Stuff. I, I, I don't drink it often. The last time I did was last year sometime. I ran out of cannabis, and. I my guy was out and was going to be out for a couple of days, so like I had nothing for a couple of days, and I was going insane because I'm so used to smoking on a regular basis, <laughs> and I ended up making myself old school uh, Jaeger bombs, you know, with beer oh. instead with beer instead of uh, oh man instead of the Red Bull, which was fine. Well, it would have been fine, except the beers I was using were these Miller Lights. That had kind of been forgotten about in the in the uh, the garage refrigerator, and you know the day after when I didn't feel the greatest, mm-hmm. I realized that those beers had probably been in that fridge for at least as long as my kids have been around. <laughs> Oh, so man. like, oh, good <laughs> God, man! <laughs> and I drank <laughs> a good, shit. I drank a good number of Jaeger bombs and went through like four or five, maybe even six of those beers. Man, the last time okay, I okay, my question, Jaeger. my question to you though, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Shane. Never mind. I'll, I'll I was wait. just gonna say the last time I had Jaeger bombs, I only got through two of them before I got sick. <laughs> 
I mean, I don't, I don't mind Jaeger bombs mainly because there's like an energy drink behind it, so it's not like. Terrible. Well, yeah, if you're drinking those ones, it's a completely different story. Like I said, I was doing the old school ones because like, that's how I remember yeah. when I was when I was growing up. <laughs> when I was first introduced to alcohol, they didn't have energy drinks. Red Bull. There was no such thing. <laughs> Red Bull wasn't a but, thing, uh, so we dry, we dropped them in beers. Well, actually, well, here's a question: When um, Zima was around. I mean, Zima's a malt beverage, but it had the same kind of taste. Oh, I remember Zima's. Yeah, that was what? That was yeah. the early 90s, mid-90s? I think that's yeah. what I started on. Yeah, as 92, like 93. Late, yeah, as a, well, like a teenager, but I was like 19 or something. Yeah, right, right. Well, yeah, that was even oh, later the, then, so yeah. My question to you, Jeremy, is did the beers, were the beers fermented any more? Like, I wonder how, I wonder if they would like had produced any more significantly more alcohol content in the period of time that they'd been in that fridge. Uh, again, it's, it was hard to tell because the amount of alcohol I drank, which again, you know, six, you know, five or six beers and the equivalent amount of shots of Jaeger that went into those beers, which wasn't, you know, like maybe like two thirds of a beer per. So, well, actually, yeah. So, you know, maybe it's eight, you know, seven, eight shots of Jaeger. <laughs> Um, the amount that, that amount of alcohol when I hadn't drank since like the last time I drank before that was at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. And I didn't even drink that much this past year because I had the kids there. So, you know, it had been a couple of months since I had done that. And, uh, so my tolerance was, was pretty low to begin with and drinking that much. I have no idea if the beers, you know, they could have been. But I was going to be sloshed either way. So it was really hard to tell. <laughs> I always go to the fest thinking, I'm not going to drink so much this year, but I always do. And then this last year, I think I outdrank everyone that last night. Oh. They were passing around tequila, of course. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I missed that. Hopefully, I got to enjoy that more of that this year. Um, yeah, now that you mentioned that, we'll, we'll, give, we'll give a little plug for that. I, I think we've mentioned it on the show before. I know I've mentioned it on oh, others. Yeah. But yeah, the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest is coming up. It's uh, getting closer. The, uh, what is it? June 21st through the 25th at the Circle Pine Center in Dalton, Michigan. Right. Uh, what's the and web? That's the real Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. Oh, yeah. There's a... Oh, man. So many shenanigans going on. There's a... Uh, well, there is some confusion, people, because there is a another splinter group that's forming their own Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest, but they're not affiliated with the Michigan, or Michigan Peace and Liberty Coalition. And uh, some people are confused, and I just want to put that out there, that the real Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest is going to be real. at the same place in June, just like it has been. It's Bitcoin, Bitcoin cash all over again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and and this is only the second year it's been in June, so it's not like they've been in June this whole time. They were in August before that. No, but it is at Circle Pines again, just no, like it always. Is. Yeah, no. Well, yeah, to, to, to not bury the lead any further, what Shane is referring to is, yes, there was, unfortunately, a, apparently shortly, sometime after the la last year's fest, there was a rift in the, uh, in, in the mid Midwest, uh, in the Michigan Peace and Liberty Coalition, and a faction of the coalition was unhappy with the direction that the rest of the group wanted to go in. So they decided to, well, actually take the money and run. As far as I know, uh, I don't think that's been disputed. So I think that's, that's okay to be said. I'm not going to mention names or anything, although I, it is unfortunate because I did kind of like the guy um, who ended up running off um, and starting this whole thing. But yeah, he's uh, his, his little faction has now uh, decided they're, they're what, yeah, I think they're doing it in August or September. I don't know. Um, they're, they chose August. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're going back to the has yet date. to be confirmed. I, well, yeah, th I was told it's going to be held in hell, Michigan. <laughs> right. But yeah, they Which have supposedly, it. supposedly it takes like $10,000 to reserve the campground there or something. And they are, um, the campground there in Hell's Creek or Hell's Ranch, whatever is already double booked for those dates. Just so you know. Oh, awesome. So yeah. So yeah. Anyway, apparently they ran off and they're, they're, in, they, you know, which they're free to do to start their own fest. Although the, the whole story with running off the money, um, that does seem pretty, that whole thing is really screwed up, but I don't want to, I don't even want to get into that because I, I'm, I'm not part of it. I don't really know all the details. And honestly, I don't really care. I just want the fest to go on because I love the fest that I went to the past two years and I just want to go to that one. And that's the one that seems to be still happening in June 21st <laughs> through 25th. <laughs> in Delton, Michigan, at the Circle Pine Center. So that's what I'm headed to. Uh, it's, yeah, just unfortunate because they're going to, you know, you could, you, these things happen, you know, groups like this 
you know, run into crossroads and they, people leave and whatever. And you're free to start your own thing. But to, to be like, at, to kind of do the whole thing, like, well, no, we're the real one. So we're going to start another fest <laughs> and try to steal the name and try to, you know, ride that and try to take the, uh, you know, try to get people to come to us because we're, we're trying to take the brand too and basically wrestle for the brand. Um, you know, that just seems to be so counterproductive, yeah. especially because what the whole fest is supposed to be about. <laughs> Peace yeah, and liberty. Just, it does remind me of Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash is the real Bitcoin. <laughs> Lols. Yeah, like you can you can coexist. You want to start a second fest and you want to have another fest and you know later in the year? Great. But like don't 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 make it don't make it worse for everybody. And don't be don't make it confusing. You know, because the same thing did happen with Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. When that when that finally first hit, there was a bunch of people that made transactions that they didn't realize they were making. That was you know trying to buy Bitcoin and what what Bitcoin Cash instead, or vice versa. You know, and uh, just everybody loses overall. <laughs> it's no, it's no good. Yep. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So the 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 fest that we know actually is scheduled and <laughs> going is going to happen is the one in June, and I'll throw the links for the show uh, in the show notes for that. But yeah, if you uh, have the time around, then you should, and there's somewhere close by. I mean, heck, like I've said, I've I've made the drive from New York the past two years, and it took me I think eleven and a half hours each way. Um, so well, hopefully you'll have a lot shorter of a drive this year. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, that, that that really is my plan as long as, you know, the courts don't screw me any further than they already have, and which, of course, there's no guarantee to that. But yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping that along with the, the selling of my house and everything else that I was mentioning earlier, that everything finally does get settled out. So like at the very least, I would like to be in Indiana for like, you know, preferably a month or more, but like at least three or four weeks for us to be settled in and starting to get the hang of the area before the fest happens, you know, cause otherwise it's just going to be such a nightmare. And I don't like, I don't want anything to ruin that experience. Cause I'm so, you know, I've been so looking forward to it. Uh, like, like a lot of people that go to that fest, we all started talking about looking forward to it the day we got back. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> cause the, the memes already start coming out. Is it, is it time for the second fest yet? You know, like, uh, we're gonna do this cause, <laughs> Yeah, it really. I mean, there's, there's there's a bunch of these fests popping up uh, all over the place, but uh, I I'm kind of partial to this one, and obviously now, mo- hopefully, moving a lot closer to it, uh, I'm going to continue to try to go to it. But yeah, if yeah. you if you get a good group of people like this, which d- d- despite the falling out that there's been with some of the people, uh, it's I, only a handful. I know, yeah. I know, I know. The rest of the people that are still going to come, no matter what, <laughs> are at least all the ones that I've personally met so far over the past couple of years are all great people, and yeah, it's a lot of fun just to instead of sitting around and you know talking online like we were mentioning earlier with the whole you know different social media stuff you know talking about this stuff online whether talking about it or arguing about it or whatever you're doing instead of doing that actually getting out and stepping away from your real world life but actually getting to hang out with people in person <laughs> especially with people yeah. like that that you talk to online and have for years and actually get to hang mm-hmm. out with them and just you know Oh. Yeah, Michigan has a great group of AnFam, and it's great to see them every year. And who knows, I may actually move out there someday. We'll see. No, you won't. Don't give the don't well, get people. I may up. not because, well, I mean, I do love the weather here in Cincinnati, and you know how it snows up there in Michigan. So it's gonna hard. It's gonna be hard to get me to leave here. I mean, it was like in the sixties today, and it was like forty was the high there in Michigan today. I think something like that. <laughs> yeah, it was a little warmer than that here today, but. I'm actually you know, where where I'm probably gonna end where where I may end up may you know is actually probably gonna be colder than what I deal with right now, um, but hey, that's just me. Uh, I don't I'm know, crazy. maybe about the same. I don't know. From what I've been told, uh, the at least the other people that are currently still living in Indiana, they're just like, yeah, it's cold here. It's colder than what you're dealing with over there because we get our burst. But like today, it was probably in the fifties or so. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, it wasn't that. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, I love about Cincinnati. <laughs> the Ohio River Valley does have great weather. Yeah, well, uh, can't, we can't have everything, right? And uh, <laughs> as I have mentioned before, um, pretty much anything outside of California is an improvement from where I'm coming from. Uh, 
So, because I do have to, as, as to circle back to something I was saying earlier about, uh, actually now I've just lost that train of thought. So forget about that. <laughs> God damn it. California. Oh yes. California. Thank you. Um, you know, pretty much, pretty much anything is a, is, is an improvement from, uh, uh, being in New York. And, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, you know, having to deal with certain things because we do exist in this paradigm that we're in right now, like as much as we'd like to not be, um, yeah, I do have to take certain laws and certain regulations and certain things I'll have to deal with into account. And, uh, yeah, pretty much anything is an improvement. <laughs> over, yeah. Well, over, hey, in over Indiana, you'll going. be able to, uh, I believe you'll be able to open carry. Yeah, as far as uh, yeah, it's it's open carry there. The only thing I have to deal with in Indiana that's a pain in the butt right now is the drug laws. Although they are try, I know there is a heavy move to try to repeal at least the the ban on CBD that they put in. Um, yeah, they're trying to get that overturned, but we'll see what happens. But you know, I mean, I of course advocate. Also, they really don't like vaping for some reason, and it makes me sad. They, just, <laughs> they have it out for it. Oh, really? I'm not aware of that. I recently yeah. became a vapor myself. Yeah, no, they uh, they have it out for for vaping generally. They're really really anti vape. That's unfortunate. Like I it's not. I mean, it's obviously it's not like a hundred percent prohibited, but there are pretty Im- impressive penalties or not penalties, but impositions on uh, businesses as to what they can sell and what they can't sell. Oh, I do believe that's the tobacco lobby actually is behind. Yeah, I'm, that. which I'm not surprised because they suck ass. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's a shame. I, they tried to they tried to get into the market and they found that they couldn't get into the market because they have no idea how the market works and they can't compete. So we're like, oh, well, we better shut that down. Well, you can always come to Cincinnati for your vaping needs. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to outsource a lot of my stuff. But like, you know, like I said, over overall, I'll take that. But that, but it, if it did, it does mean I, I have to give up on, you know, choosing climates <laughs> too. <laughs> Plus, you know, colder weather is probably better for... Uh, a little better for the buffalo um and also a lot better for mining purposes too so <laughs> i got that going for me but like i said either way it's no matter what it's still an improvement over what i deal with now so i will take it but all right on that note we should probably get wrapping up because uh we, yeah it's getting to be about that time gents we, we went we went from not knowing what we we're going to talk about to rambling on for over an hour so uh anything? i know but we covered so many good topics yes. we, we did we yes, did yes uh anything either of you want to say before we get closing out no i think that about covers it yeah i uh i don't have anything else all right well then uh thanks you th- thanks thanks guys for showing up dave you suck although actually like i said it's it's nice when dave's not around oh, i shouldn't say that dave and i had a really fun time in the, lot, the other show that was just him and man I. you were just you were just ragging on him I always why, don't you just, him. why don't you just not have him on the show anymore then <laughs> jeremy god someday Andre. thought we were a family someday Some try to break up the family so, someday Andre. anyway <laughs> uh dave knows i love him but anyway so yeah so thank you everybody for listening this has been the seeds of liberty podcast all of our information can be found at solpodcast.org uh please if you haven't yet uh, check out our patreon page and consider becoming a patron as we've mentioned in the past couple of weeks we did finally install a uh, kind of like a level system over there. So while you still can just donate as little as $1 a month and get access to the weekly bonus show that comes out, uh, there are some additional perks that we've added for, because we do have some people that have been great, you know, wonderful enough to donate more than a dollar a month to us over the, <laughs> already. Um, so for the people that already are doing that and people that want to give us a little more money, there's some other additional perks at different levels. So please consider checking us out over there and, uh, uh, throwing some money our way if you appreciate what we do um otherwise other than that our amazon link too that was something else i realized the other day we hadn't mentioned it in a while um even though it's not the holiday season anymore anybody who still uses their amazon uh does amazon shopping regularly then uh, please consider using our amazon link because that's still the easiest way to uh donate to us because it doesn't cost you anything so once again thank you everybody for listening and we'll catch you next time peace
you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's antiwar.com. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. I've run websites since 1996 and have used over a dozen web hosts in that time. Agoristhosting.com is the only one that hasn't broken my heart. Agorist Hosting's uptime and service is stellar, and their DDoS mitigation is the best I've seen. That's important because if you tell the truth in this world, you'll ruffle feathers. No matter what the haters hit us with, Agorist Hosting keeps our websites online. If you have a mission-critical commercial presence or a world-changing activism site, go with agoristhosting.com.